All right, Shalom. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shah Bahasham, Rakah Kodash. Even though I'm not a great millstone, may double honors be given unto the elder apostles, elder bishops, a great millstone, who taught me this truth, peace, blessings, salutations to the elect of the nation of Israel, wherever you may be. Um, you know, just going into a lesson, all right? Um, Revelation, the 14th chapter. All right, um, Revelation chapter 14 and verse 1. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion, and with him an hundred and forty-four thousand. All right, a hundred and forty and four thousand, having his father's name. All right, and when you deal with the Greek, all right, his son's name written in their foreheads. Now, if, if there can be translation comparison. Um, let me see if I can just do something real quick. Right, you see this you go to the Spanish version of the verse right and <clears throat> when you go to the Spanish Spanish version of the verse okay um, you translate it and it says then I looked and behold the the lamb stood on Mount Zion and with him a, in a hundred and forty and four thousand a hundred and forty four thousand having his name and his father's name written on their forehead. So you see how they took that out when they, were, you know, some things that they took out, but for the most part, the Bible is the 1611 King James version Bible with old Testament, the Apocrypha and the new Testament. But you see how they took that out. It says having his name and his father's name written on their foreheads. You see? Okay. So having his name, and his father's name written in their foreheads okay meaning that they have memorized they memorized the name of Yahweh and his only begotten son Yahweh Shai and they memorized the name of Yahweh Shai all right and his father Yahweh you see the 144,000 12,000 out of each tribe that the Lord has predestined unto salvation deliverance and favor and grace and mercy these men, okay, they have both the name of the son and the name of their father in their mind. And they know the, the name. They know the correct translation of the name. They, they know the name. So Nate, all right, Bishop Nathaniel of the IUIC, this snake nigga talking about we're going to get the, the name in the kingdom. If, if, uh, if I'm not mistaken. That's what IUIC was claiming. Hey, these dudes are going off and the Lord is going to destroy them, man. Okay. They are going off and the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yashah, is going to destroy them. The Lord is not dealing with any nigga, all right, talking about that we don't have the name. All right. The scriptures say that the name of the Lord, Proverbs 18 and 10, is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. So knowing that we're living in the last days and things are about to get dystopic just like you see in these hollywood movies how the fuck are you gonna survive without having those names you see how in the hell how in the fuck are you gonna survive without you having those names yahweh yahweh shy and those are the names he is he to be he exists you <sighs>
Salakia. I'm just a bit tired. He is he to be. He exists. Bah Hashem. In the name of he is the deliverer. He is the savior. He is salvation. <clears throat> Why? Because Yahweh Shai was going to save the nation of Israel from their sins. Okay, Revelation 14 and 2. And I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters and as a voice of a great thunder. And I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. Verse 3. And they sung as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn that song but the 144,000. But the 140. And 4,000, the 144, the 144,000, which were redeemed from the earth. Okay, now this song is not, this song is not, um, it's not necessarily, it's, it's not a song, gospel music. It has, it, it ain't got nothing to do with gospel. It ain't got nothing to do with rap because all that shit's demonic anyways. The Lord said in Amos 5 and 23, Take thou away from me the noise of thy songs, for I will not hear the melody of thy vows. So the Lord is not dealing with plantation Christianity and he's not dealing with these rappers either. The Lord doesn't like any of them, all right? You know, he's dealing with the men of the Lord, which are, which by process of elimination is the men of great most of them and those that teach the same doctrine. Coming in the stead in, in the spirit and power of Yahabashim Yashai. These are the men that Yahabashim Yashai is dealing with. Okay? These are the men that Yahabashim Yashai is dealing with. Alright? And through the spirit and power of Yahabashim Yashai, this, this song is being sung. All right, using the unicorn, the internet of uh, things and YouTube to upload these shows, videos and lessons, prophecies and teachings and breakdowns of the scriptures. All right. And that's the song that's being sung. All right. By the hundred and forty four thousand, which we hope to be a part of, man. You see. There's a scripture in, in the book of Matthew. What was it? Chapter 17 and verse. No, it was Matthew 11. Matthew chapter 11 and verse. Matthew chapter 11 and verse 15. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. But whereunto shall I like him? This generation is like unto children sitting in the markets and calling unto their fellows and saying, We have piped unto you and ye have not danced. We have mourned unto you and ye have not lamented. You see? So... So um, when you deal with the marketplaces, the marketplaces, a lot of times, that's where the prophets went out, teach the scriptures, you know, on the highways, byways, and, you know, hedges, like the Lord said, out in the open, all right? You had the marketplaces and all that, and the men of the Lord was right around teaching and breaking down the scriptures. And so that's where the piping and the dancing is happening. All right, and, 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 and piping and dancing, all right, is what happens when, whenever a song is on. All right, so that song, okay, correlates with mourning, all right, and, and lamentation. Because the scriptures say, he that increases knowledge increases sorrow. All right. And oppression make the wise man mad because when you wake up to this knowledge, when you wake up to this truth, you find out the fact that you're a Hebrew Israelite, 
you find out that the Heavenly Father is only begotten Son, and the angels are so called Negroes, and you find out the name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh, that his son's name is Yahweh Shai, that you're not a so called nigger, Hispanic, Native American, that you're, you know, Hebrew Israelite from Judah, Benjamin, Levi, Ephraim, Simeon, all the way down to Issachar, the so called Mexicans. You find out that, you know, the so called white men are the Edomites that the Bible speaks about, and they're going into slavery. You find out that you're the true gods of the planet Earth. All right. You know, you find out that Christianity and all this other nonsense ain't the truth. OK. And that you need to fear the most high and, and you know, come back to his law, statutes and commandments. Right. When you find all this out. Right. It, it brings a sense of mourning and lamentation. OK. And that's the song that's being sung. That's the song that's being sung. OK. That we're the Israelites and we need to come back to serve Yahweh. But right now we're under our enemies. You see. Revelation 14 and 3, and they sung as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders, and no man could learn that song but the 144,000, right? But the 140 and 4,000 which were redeemed from the earth, these are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. Okay? Women representing the false philosophies of the world. The 144,000 weren't defiled by the false philosophies and deceptions and lies and dogmas of the world. Christianity, Islam, all right, Hinduism. For they are virgins, they're pure. They're pure in the doctrine of Yahab Hashim Yashai. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men. So all the 144,000 are men being the first fruits unto the most high and to the lamb, right? Because when it was Yahweh and his only begotten son, Yahweh Shah, the spirits that came right after Yahweh Shah was the 144,000. And the, the, and that was the Allah Hayim that helped Yahweh Shah to create the heavens and the earth that said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. And that's the same brothers coming back in this time. All right, uploading shows, lessons, and videos. Okay? Prophesying, teaching. You see how deep this thing is? You know? Verse 5, and in their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of the Most High. Okay, because the doctrine that we teach is, is, is all according to the scriptures and it matches up through the spirit and power of Yahab Hashim Yashai. Okay, you know, these so called Christ these so called Christians ain't got it, man. All right, they ain't got it. Okay. You know, our, our, our mouths are without guile before Yahweh Shem Yashai, man. Verse 6, And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear the Most High and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come. And worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountain fountains of waters. And there followed followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Dealing with America. America influenced everybody to be an idiot. 
it influenced everybody to be a jackass. It influenced everybody to be a homosexual, to follow Christianity, to have that democracy, to uplift women, to put women on the pedestal like they something. All right, Hollywood influence, celebrity influence, social media influence. All nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, America. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, the beast dealing with NATO and the EU, their image dealing with their system, if you worship the beast and the system of this society, right, which is going to lead up to the, the image that they plan to bring about the new world order, and, re and, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand. So that's how you worship the beast in his image. By receiving that mark in, in the forehead or in the hand. Notice how it doesn't say right or left. It just says your hand. Meaning that it can be your right hand. It can be your left hand. Okay. Wherever you take that MOTB. Okay. You got it in your cheek instead of your forehead, whatever. Same thing, same difference, same thing. You got it in your cheek or in your forehead, whatever. It's the same difference, it's the same thing. You just got the, you got the CHIP. Well, I didn't mean to say, well, you got the CHIP, you got the RFID CHIP in you, the MOTV. Then... Verse 10 says, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of the Most High, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. Meaning that you take that MOTB, that CHIP, the Lord is going to destroy you. Okay? Ain't no second guessing it. The Lord, Yahweh Bashim is just going to simply destroy you. Ain't no ands, ifs, or buts about it if you take the MOTB, which is the CHIP. Ain't no ands, ifs, and buts about it. Yahweh Shai is going to come back with the holy angels and burn the fuck out of you, man, with hellfire from the chariots of the Lord. The so-called UFO shooting laser beams to blast you and destroy your ass, man. We know hell is not a place that you go and burn forever, but man, still, all right, feeling being tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. That's hell, man. That's hell. All right, Yahweh shot coming back with those so-called UFOs and the angels inside of them. You know, to shoot laser beams and to destroy all you people. Okay. Man. These people are going to be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. Right while Yahweh Shai and the angels is looking at you. You're going to be getting burned with laser beams and all kinds of just unexplainable phenomena of fire and lightning just coming out of those chariots, all right, to torment your ass for all your sins, especially taking that MOTB, which is that CHIP, and the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever, which really just means a long period of time. Because it's going to feel like forever, baby, as you're getting destroyed by Yahweh Shai or, or burning in those thermonuclear missiles, okay, of World War Three, which is going to happen. And the main uh, 
place of World War Three is going to be America, where the missiles are going to be launched to destroy America, make America desolate. You see? And they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image and whosoever received the mark of his name. Verse 12, here is patience, here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of the most high and the faith of Yahweh Shai. So in the patience of waiting for Yahweh Shai, the saints are going to make sure that they keep the commandments of the most high and they, they keep the faith of Yahweh Shai to replace to replace the sacrificial laws because we know that the Lord dying on the cross he was the ultimate sacrifice so he he replaced that but all the other laws we still need to keep them to the best of our ability Khan Salakia dealing with a fucking roach alright um Verse 12, here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of the Most High, the faith of Yahweh Shai. So while waiting on Yahweh Shai, the saints are going to keep the commandments to the best of their ability. All right, because we know that we can't keep it perfectly. All right, but they're going to also keep faith on Yahweh Shai because they know that he replaced the sacrificial law. But apart from that, all the other law is still in effect. You're still going to keep them to the best of your ability. Moral law, thou shalt know the gods before me, etc., etc., Dietary law, that's obvious, okay, and ceremonial law, okay, you know, the feast days and things of that nature, all right, because faith, all right, also makes, uh, is also in tangent with action, all right, that's why, what was it, Paul, he said, you show me your faith without your works, and I'll show you my faith by my works, because we're saved by faith through grace and not of our works, but at the same time, all right, you show your faith by your works. So it goes hand in hand, you see. So you can't avoid it and you, you can't ignore it. It is what it is. It's there. All right. See, that's why a lot of these Christians, they get, get all caught, twisted, bugged out. Hey, but that's all right, because eventually, Yahweh is going to get them. Okay, verse 13, and I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right blessed are the dead which die in the Lord, Yahweh Shai, from henceforth. Yea, save the spirit that they may rest from their labors and their works to follow them. Okay. Revelation 14 and 14, and I looked and behold a white cloud, and upon the cloud one like one sat like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown. And in his hand a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the temple crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, thrust in thy sickle and reap. For the time has come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. And he that sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. Okay. And that's going into dealing with the judgment. All right that's going to take place okay it's time for these grapes these people they're ripe meaning their their wickedness is is enough to a satisfying point where the lord is ready to crush and and, and enjoy crushing these people in their pride for their wickedness and all the atrocities that these people have done all right and under this Americanized influence society, all right. This Babylonian influence society, American influence society. You see, the wickedness of these people, all right, has reached to a level where it's likened unto grapes reaching being ripe. So the Lord is getting ready to fuck these fuck these people up, and He's going to enjoy doing it too. Verse seventeen. And another angel came out out of the temple, which is in heaven. He also having a sharp sickle. And another angel came out from the altar, which had power over fire, and cried with a loud voice to him that had the sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in thy sharp sickle, and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, for her grapes are fully ripe. And the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth, and gathered the vine of the earth, and cast it into the great winepress 
of the wrath of the Most High. And the winepress was trodden without the city. And blood came out of the winepress. Which symbolizes just the fact that Yahweh Shai, when he comes back. Hey, the, the, the scripture saying Isaiah 63. Uh, who is this that coming from Edom with dyed garments from Basra? Because... And 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 uh, in the book of Revelation, the 19th chapter, it says that he he the Lord when he comes back, he has a, a vesture, all right, that was dipped in blood. It just symbolizes the fact that Yahweh Shah is coming back to kill people. The angels is gonna come back and kill people, all right. It doesn't actually mean that blood, all right, is gonna be on the garment of Yahweh Shah and the angels, okay, even unto the horse bridles. By the space of a thousand and six hundred furlongs. All right, so you know that was just a short lesson, straight to the point. It wasn't too long, you know. Sometimes I can go on to to be 40, 40 50 minutes. Okay, you know, sometimes it, you know it could be thirty minutes, but hey, you know that was Revelation fourteen. You know, I know I didn't get you know too many a lot of precepts. Okay, but you know, with that, I'm going to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Rakakwadash. Even though I'm not a great millstone, that one is the elder apostles, other bishops, a great millstone. Peace, blessings, salutations to the elect, wherever you may be. All right, Shalom, DTA, and Baba Ball, Kwam Yasha Allah. All right, Shalom.